Hello everyone! In this tutorial we are going to build a basic chat application using the Firebase real-time database. Basically the app will allow user to create a chat room in which he can exchange messages with other users. Ok, so first go to the Google console and create a new project. Click on add Firebase to your Android app. Then go to the Android Studio and copy the package name of your application and paste it into the appropriate input label. Skip the save dialog and press continue. Now copy the top dependency and paste it into the projects version of build.gradle settings. Then copy the bottom dependency and apply it in apps version of Gradle settings. And also add these two dependencies which are necessary in order to access the real-time database. After that, go to the settings panel and download the Google services configuration file. Place it in the app folder of your application. Ok, so now let's see how this real-time database works. Click on database label on the sidebar. First let's go to this tab named rules. Here we can configure who can access our database. By default only the registered users with the Firebase can use the database. I explained token registration process in my previous tutorial about push notifications, so we will skip registration in this example. In order to allow non-registered users to access the database, we simply change our read and write permissions to true. And then hit the publish button. Ok, so here we can see our project name. It represents a root of our database and it is like a tree. We can append it with new objects that can be nested. This allows us to create a new child which can also have children inside of it. And that's why it is perfect for chat application. So for an example we can make a child named Android which can be the name of the chat room. And then inside of it we can create a new object which represents the message. Now we append each message with a random identifier. Each message identifier must be unique so that we can post messages that can be duplicated. Like if someone sends hello and then other person also responds with hello. We must allow that. So then our message will consist of two children. First one will represent the name of the user and the other one will represent the, the actual message. As you see these children are stored in a key value format. In this example name is the key with the value being Philip and the message is key with the value being this is test. Ok so now we can go and build an application. First go to the UI layout of the main activity. Our app will have two activities, one that will be used for creating and listing the chat rooms and the other activity that will allow us to chat with other people inside of the room. As you see here I placed an edit text in which we type the name of the room. Then there is a button that sends a request to the Firebase and creates that room. And also I placed a list view that shows all available chat rooms. Ok, so in my main activity I referenced all these views with the find view by ID method. Also I created an array list in which we will store the active chat rooms. Before moving on, just please go to the manifest file and add the internet permission. Ok, so when the user opens the app, we should first ask him to enter the desired username. 
without username he can't use the app so let's create a new method and here we can use an alert dialog to ask for the username we create a new edit text and bind it with the dialog using the set view method then we set the positive button on our dialog and we save the content from the edit text in this new variable so just create this variable also set the negative button response for the dialog in this case we would not allow user to continue with the app but for testing purposes in this demo we will just call the the whole method again so that the user is forced to enter the username and at the end just call the show method to reveal the dialog now let's set the click listener on the button which is responsible for creating chat rooms in order to access the database we use the database reference object and to get the root of our database we use the get root method what we want now is to append the root of our database with children these children are our actual chat room names as i said earlier everything is saved in a key value format so to update the database we must use a map so we'll create a new like hash map and inside of the hash map for the key we will put the room name from the edit text that the user fills up and for the value we will just type the quote marks which represents nothing because we only need the name of the chat room then to append the root with this room name call the root.updateChildren method and pass in the just created hash map now we can just quickly test this and see if it is working correctly so we first enter our username now we can type the room name let's type like android click add room and as you see the database is now appended with the new child okay so our next task would be to show these available rooms in the list view in order to do that we can set the value event listener on our database reference object so when we set the listener we have two methods we are interested in the first one whenever we load the app to access the database or when the database is appended with the new children on data change method gets called within that method we get the iterator which we can use to go through the database and read it we can access the iterator with the get children then iterator method note that we can read only the first level of children so if we have nested children inside these rooms we can't read them from this position okay so then we use the has next method from the iterator which reads database line by line inside of this condition we should append our list now the problem is that when the database gets updated for example when the new room is added list will append and have duplicates because of the old values from it and we don't want the room names to repeat in the list view in order to fix that we can create a temporary hash set and we append that hash map with add method and inside of it we pass the get key method which will get all room names then we clear the current list and append it using the temporary hash set which contains all the room names after that to see the changes on the screen update the list view adapter with the notify method now let's test again as you can already see the list view is appended with our room name so let's add one more room as you see the changes are applied really fast and that's why it is called the real-time database okay so the next step would be uh, to go to the chat room itself and then start the conversation with other people so to do that we can create a new click listener for the list view here we create a new intent that will lead us to the new class which we will 
defined in the second part of the tutorial. In this chat room activity we will need to know what is the name of the chat room that we chose and what is the name of the active user. So we will use put extra method to send these values to the chat room class. We can extract the room name from the selected list item by casting our parametered view to the text view. And also we provide a username which we previously saved in a variable called name. Then just call the start activity. Okay, so uh, in the second part of the tutorial we will build the actual chat room to send and receive messages. See you soon, bye.